Yeah, let's keep the boxing theme going uh, because uh, on the back of the Times, uh, a story written by a colleague of ours here at the News Building at London Bridge, uh, chief sports correspondent for the Times, it's an exclusive, and this man has many. Uh, a team of doctors and scientists believe they have gathered the evidence that proves that the boxer Conor Ben did not take a banned substance. Of course, the fight that was due to happen between Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. never took place because of not one but two failed drugs tests regarding. Connor Ben. Ever since then, Connor Ben has periodically told us that he will be proving his innocence. Well, maybe this will go a long way to doing that. Uh, Matt Lawton joins us live in the show. Matt, good afternoon to you. <coughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Simon. Hello, Matt. Matt, thanks for, for being with us. So now we know this team of doctors and scientists believe that they will have the proof uh, that shows that Connor Ben did not take a banned substance. When are they likely to make this uh, make this public? Well, they've made it public in the sense that they, they've they've asked the Times to uh, you know share this information. Yeah. Um, but but they look. The next step um, is that they will um, they will need to appear before a uh, a UK anti doping panel, and you ha- and, and you presume that this will be their defence. Um, the only way that that Conor Ben gets proper closure on this is is to go before such panel um and as i say if this is the basis of their defense this scientific research that's been conducted a combination of tests on ben himself and uh, a reference uh, and, and basically taking the data that they that they that's been shared with them by vada which was the testing uh, agency that did the test for wbc last year if if the uh the experts that you could agree with their reading of it then i guess that could lead to his um to hit to his name being cleared but you know at this stage it's compelling w- what they've got it, it 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 is interesting there is a um a scientific paper that was actually part funded by wada because of the um, rise since 2011 in clomiphene positives in sport. And there was concern around whether this drug is in the food chain and, and whether whether it could be, um, there could be a link between the illicit use of clomiphene in the farming industry and these positive tests. And, and, and that's what's interesting around this. It, and, and what piqued my interest was the fact that this study does claim to have identified a distinction in the metabolites between um, a, a group of people who were given the drug itself and a group of people who were given uh, eggs to eat, which did contain clomiphene. And they say there's a distinction in the metabolites. And what these guys are saying who are now looking at Ben's case is that is that the metabolites in his urine that were collected by VADA um, are consistent with the metabolites um, that were found in the in the group of people that were given the eggs. So, right, right, look, yeah, you know that still needs to be put in front of you, Cad. But but that's where we are. I mean, the wider question is, Simon, as and whenever this group of scientists, as Matt is explaining and articulately yeah. explaining, as and whenever they produce this evidence, have many members of the boxing public not decided, rightly or wrongly, that. Conor Ben cannot be trusted from this point onwards. Well, if anyone has decided that, that the only reason they would have decided it is primarily because of Conor's behaviour um, and his reaction to the charges that have been brought against him. His interview with Piers Morgan when, when asked by Piers as to the reasons why he wouldn't provide a 270-page report to the British Boxing Board of Control in UKED and his response was to tell them that they can go and do one. Um, all of these conclusions... Uh, that people may have drawn from that are the reasons that they may have um, the, the the outlook that they have. Now, of course, Connor himself decided to go down a route, whether he's been badly advised, and I think he has from the outset for a series of reasons, some from motivation from greed and some from people that are just pure opportunists that have latched on to him. Um, he's alighted upon a course that has, has, has taken him into the WBC, the Bill Boxing Control, who gave him an outcome similar to this, which was the attribution of blame to contaminated eggs mm. that, were, that, that yeah. ostensibly were in America. And he, yeah. he himself resisted that. 
Um, it'll be very interesting to see because I I do think there's a case for Conor Ben and a case for sport to look at the strict liability things quite carefully because there is an element an element of I don't even see with all due respect if this still gets him around strict liability. What's your take on that, Matt? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, and and I think potentially what this case um, opens up is, and it was a point that the doctor, this 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 um, uh, NHS GP guy that 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 looked into this and and did the screening on 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 Ben, uh, is a point he makes. Simon is that is that if actually when you when you get into looking specifically at an athlete and their genetics and their biology, and actually it raises certain issues. And I was talking to an anti-doping lawyer who said that, you know, for me, it was the, it was the science of the, you know, the, the, the expert in Turkey and, and this paper that, as I say, was part funded by WADA. That for me was, was the most interesting bit, but for him as a, as an anti-doping lawyer, it is actually the fact that they've also identified that, that Ben is more, um, you know, it, it, it actually ha, ha, his, 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 his biological systems don't metabolize this drug very well, which means that if he, if he did ingest it through, eggs or whatever um he he stores it he's more susceptible to suddenly having yeah. uh, a positive drug test and that suddenly opens up the whole strict liability thing again because, that's my point yeah. uh, because actually crikey if you know does this mean that in any positive drug test scenario you've you've the 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 anti-doping agency has has got to to be fair has got to then conduct a load of screening tests on each athlete and suddenly you're talking about extra expense and, and who's got to prove at the moment strict liability means that the that the athlete has As got the to owners, prove yeah. has got to prove that they it's are a very blunt it's a very in fairness to connor got there. yeah in fairness yeah, to connor it it's a very blunt instrument isn't it it is Where, whereas does is there the potential for this case to swing it back around and say, no, you prove it didn't get in there that yes, way? Yes, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. If he has regrets at all, I think, Matt, I think he regrets going on with Piers Morgan. Is that right? Oh, well, I think massively regrets that. Uh, because, look, you've got a situation where you have, you have uh, a team of lawyers who are going through a process um, where they're basically saying at this stage you can't say anything, you can't share this stuff. And actually, you know, the, the, the anti-doping lawyer that whose whose services he has enlisted for some time, you know, he's still dealing with, as I understand it, he's still dealing with the, the UK British Boxing Border Control bit. And he's not been part of this process, um, of, of this particular process. So it's it's you know, you've almost got two teams now working uh, in isolation for Ben. Which complicates the situation, but um, as I say, as a journalist, Jim, mm. I'm I was invited to, to to sit down with these guys last week. Ben was there. Um, I had a doctor talking talking through the science. It made some logical sense to me. Um, I've read the I've read the uh, the independent research. I've read the report done by the guy in Turkey that the, who, who's an expert in 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 fertility medicine and, and clomiphene in particular has written papers on it. I went independently to another doctor to have a look at it, to sense check it for me because at the end of the day, I've got a degree in English literature. Um, so as much <laughs> as I've done stuff right. about anti-doping, yeah. I'm not a scientist. Yeah. So look, and I found it, certainly newsworthy it felt significant but as i say none of this goes away until these findings are accepted by the anti-doping agency for sure will ultimately decide whether he's guilty or so not. finally so, what kind of time scale are we talking about matt is as has that been some as the new evidence been submitted yet no no it hasn't so uh, they've chosen to go the public route first um and then they hope to engage but that engagement you know that, that that engagement won't be a case of of sitting in a in a in in a room quietly and going through this you know wilder would uh, take issue with that as as one anti doping lawyer explained it it's still got to be an anti doping panel and there will be a case for and a case for the defense and you have to assume that this is now going to form the basis of any defense that Conor Ben wants to present. I got the sense last week that Conor Ben 
will not rest until he has been exonerated by UK anti-doping. Um, and, and and that's the only way he gets closure on this because, yeah. you know, whether he, you know, whether he is guilty or not, this whole situation has broken him. You know, you can tell that. And, and, you know, I interviewed him last October. I interviewed him again last week, albeit in the company of these, the doctor and this advisor that he's got, this guy, Rene Carriol. And he is, he, you know, he is damaged by this. It, it is, you know, athletes don't come, don't go through this process. It's not easy. It is, it is potentially ruinous. You yes. Know, it, yeah. it is re- reputationally uh, massively damaging. It's affected his family life. Um, he wants to, he wants, he wants some closure on this. And the only way for me that that happens is if this is if this evidence is presented to you, yeah, Dad, yeah. They look at it independently with their scientists, and they go, "Yep." Yeah. Now, taken into context, his biology, these findings, the samples that were collected by Vada, this scientific um, uh, uh, paper that's been published, uh, and as I say, was part funded by Vada. Yep, yeah, we 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 believe that it is possible that um, okay. that Connor, Connor Ben is the victim of of um, uh, uh, of a wrong of, outcome of contamination. Okay. Of contamination. All right. uh, Matt, thank you so much. Matt Lawson is the Chief Sports Correspondent of The Times. And as you heard there, Ben's doctors are saying, we will prove that he didn't dope. We'll watch it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.